The goal of this podcast is to help you break in and thrive in advertising and marketing. Welcome to the inaugural episode of Breaking and Entering Brand Side. Don't get us wrong, we love talking to agency folks. That's why we've interviewed over 200 ad agency professionals. And we will continue to share agency side stories. But we want to learn from those that do marketing. So to kick this segment off, we have one of my favorite brands in the world. It's LinkedIn. Love LinkedIn. Built my brand, built breaking and entering on it, and you can get your job there. I wrote a blog about it. It's just, it's actually one of my favorite networking, uh, social media apps that I scroll on daily. But Kim Chitra is Director of Global Brand Marketing at LinkedIn. She's on today to talk with us about her journey from breaking into the agency side to attending Northwestern University's Kellogg School of Business to earn her MBA. MBA. I asked her why she jumped from the agency side to brand side. I asked her about her MBA experience, what that entailed, the internship process, if it was the most stressful time of her life, and she provides all of those answers. And then, of course, we talk about her life on the other side, how she and her team at LinkedIn are bridging the gap between marketing and advertising. So whether you want to break into marketing or advertising or not sure what the difference is, Kim's story and advice will certainly help you, inform you, and certainly inspire you. Now on with the show. This is the Breaking and Entering Brand Side Podcast. And as usual, I'm your accomplice, Gino Schellenberger. Kick it, Mikey. Kim Yasin Chitra. Did I pronounce your name correctly? Yeah, sounds good. How the heck are you today? Thank you for joining the Breaking and Entering Brandside Podcast. Thank you for having me. Brandside Podcast. So the first time we're like really putting that out to the world. We've had on some Brandside marketers on the show in the past 253 plus episodes we posted, but now we're officially owning it. Making it a thing. And we're starting off strong with what my second favorite brand of all time, which actually might be my number one favorite brand now, um, LinkedIn. And it was Costco. I love Costco. Um, I love Costco. The Kirkland brand. I wrote this paper and I wrote this blog a couple of months ago. LinkedIn was my number two, but I might have to bump it up to number one. So we're here to talk about you. We're here to talk about LinkedIn. We're here to talk about how you broke into brand side and why. Do you regret it? Because uh, you had some agency experience. Is that correct? Yeah, I was. I started off agency side. And today you are the director of global brand marketing at LinkedIn. Yep. Is that correct? Yes. Boom. And shout out to Santi Pochit, um, who connected us. Good friend of mine. He's been on the show. Uh, so everybody should go listen to Santi's episode as well. Are you friends with Santi? How, do you work with him close? Yes, we got thrown into um, an, an intense project together, maybe starting fall of 22, and very quickly, I think became like ride or die. <laughs> Represent. <laughs> He's a great dude. What was intense? Like, what could be? What's intense? Well, in you the know, like the, the advertising campaign stuff it gets Launching. a little bit hectic. Um, but it was fun too, and I'm proud of it. But you know, he he had just started at the time. Um, and so there's always like a getting to know you phase of like your new boss and manager in the organization. And so kind of living that together, mm-hmm. but then being successful is gratifying. And you guys crushed it. Yes. <laughs> nice. So tell me about your role. So do you work with is a LinkedIn marketing sector within? I, I love the news portion on LinkedIn, I have to say. Like on the top right. I mean, it's my, yeah. it's, I love it. Um, so just had to get that out there. I'm, a, I'm fanboying right now. I love it. Um, your team, what do you guys do? Are you working with an internal agency? Are you working with external agency agencies? 
how does this ecosystem work to really manage the brand that is LinkedIn? Sure. So my team, so when it comes to brand, I would say that the focus area is brand marketing. So marketing communications, typically campaigns um, going out into the world. The focus is more consumer for sure. Um, So think more like career, career growth. Uh, And then when it comes to partners, it's been a mix um, both external agencies, but then most recently working with our internal brand creative team. Um, and that's been different for me also because it's been more partner than a traditional client agency relationship in a way that was really cool. Um, mm-hmm. And I think ends up being more collective. Like it feels more like our teams work together versus client agency. But sometimes it could be nice to have that understanding like i'm the client you're the agency you're servicing you know collaboration as well but there's a delineation uh, so i guess learning how to be more of a together team probably was, is something that's super interesting and probably more meaningful yeah because you're growing together so that makes sense so you got the brand team and you said there is a mix of some external agencies here and there for some larger stuff or is that shifting more internal it's shifted at least in the past year mm-hmm. internal um, prior to that, I'd had worked with both like our internal team as well as external agencies. Gotcha. So got it. And that you said is mainly consumer facing. So yeah. who's the target audience for LinkedIn? Folks that want to grow their career, right? Boom. You care about your career. Um, you want to either get a new job or get better at your current one. Mm-hmm. Um, LinkedIn learning. Yep. Totally. Uh, we're actually talking about that more in a, in campaign work soon. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's mostly folks that really want to grow in their career. And where are you based? Where are you, where are you living? Where are you at? Where are you recording this from? I live in San Francisco. Got it. Is that, um, the head, is that where the headquarters is at? Yes, in the Bay Area. Beautiful there. Um, I have a friend that moved up. February. Yeah. Spoiled. What's the weather like over there? It's sunny and it's so usually it's foggy by me because I live more towards the west side of uh, San Francisco and it's very pretty. It's the skies. Yeah. What are some of the areas? Um, Marin, is that something? Very pretty. Yeah. That's over the Golden Gate Bridge. And Russian Hill, is that something? Yep. That's in San Francisco. Very hilly. It's beautiful out there. How Have you lived there your whole life? No, I moved here in 2014, but I'm actually originally from New Jersey. Mm, gotcha. Just slowly like moved from East Coast to Middle to West Coast. Got it, got it. Before we kick it back to your your break-in story, I want to sit here. What do I need to ask you about LinkedIn? I think like, the, I guess a clear understanding of your job as a global brand marketing director for LinkedIn. Can we kind of hover there and kind of like dive into your responsibilities uh, and having that clear understanding between you and the internal brand agency, like what's the difference? Yeah, help me because I'm new to this world, and help our audience uh, understand what you do and how you interact with them. Sure. So I would say, on the brand side, my expectations are having depth of understanding of the business, right? So. What are the priorities? Um, and then how marketing can address those. Mm-hmm. So, for example, do you need to drive awareness of your product or brand, or do you need to drive consideration and like throughout the marketing funnel? And so getting clarity on how are you supporting the business and how marketing plays that role and how is it relevant to your audience to me all sits with brand, right? Really clarity on what does this marketing thing need to do? in order to be impactful. And then from there, you'd partner with brand creative or creative strategy to figure out, okay, like what is the springboard um, and what is the strategy to unlock that? That is actually the intersection of art and science. Gotcha. So on a recent campaign, can can we talk about a recent campaign that you maybe Santi worked on or is anything top of mind and recent in your LinkedIn career that we can kind of refer to? Sure. Cool. So 
I guess, like, what was a campaign that you're proud of? What area of the marketing funnel did that like seek to um, like address and uh, help? Yeah. So uh, Sante and I worked on a campaign uh, last spring um, and the focus was more on conveying LinkedIn's value at the highest level. So really establishing as a place to grow your career. And there are different ways that LinkedIn can do that, right? So we have jobs on our platform. You had referenced news, right? So there's like content that can help you like get better at your job. Mm -hmm. And there are people that you can connect with Mm -hmm. help you grow in your career um, and get career advice. And so that was the campaign that we had worked on. And it ended up launching in the US, Germany, and India uh, in May and June of last year. And what was that called? That was the Find Your In campaign. Find Your In. So would that be awareness? Is that the top of that? Yeah. So the top part of it was um, really establishing LinkedIn as a place to like, inspire the different career possibilities, right? So it actually went like much more emotional. Um, and then further down, grounding it in the different ways, so like more mid-funnel to drive mm-hmm iteration of like, okay, how do you inspire those different possibilities for what you want for your career? Here are the different ways LinkedIn can help you do that. Uh, and then trying to convert lower down the funnel. Wonderful. And would you, would you say it was successful? Yes. Yeah. It moved our top KPIs um, for across those markets, which is exciting. I think this is a good intro for me understanding the brand side. So I've, there might be some student listeners that are probably cringing like, Gino, like this is like marketing 101, but um, it's just good to get the fundamentals and a reminder. So looking at that funnel and we see it today, like there's been some conversations where there was some misalignment in some campaigns, whether it was addressing awareness or conversion. And we saw that in a recent campaign that was on LinkedIn everywhere and people were talking about it. So I think it's really important. You probably had a very clear like alignment with your team that you knew that this was the key, these were the KPIs. We're looking for increase uh, in awareness by some sort of measurement. Uh, but you made sure that it was crystal clear. Everybody signed off. And like that's probably just high level, just making sure there's alignment on the goals, the key performance indicators. Is that correct? Oh yeah, totally. Like and even if your campaign is full funnel, mm-hmm. having alignment on you know, what is the communication task for each part of the funnel, and then how are you delivering assets that connect the idea throughout, mm-hmm. then also um, through the communication funnel, uh, hitting everything you needed to. Um, and so a lot of communication um, and making sure that you're clear on what matters Mm-hmm. Um, and that you don't have like square peg round hole assets. Yeah. So then like, what's the most like, what's the most consistent like feedback, constructive criticism, would you say? Like it's not me, it's not fulfilling the campaign goals. It's not on strategy. Is that something you find yourself kind of reminding your team or maybe past agency partners? Um. I think when I'm evaluating creative, I think the main thing is going back to what is this, what is the intent of what you're trying to do? Mm -hmm. Like, what is your objective for this marketing thing that we're making together? And then also like for your audience, what do they care about? Um, Why does LinkedIn play a role? Why does this product matter? And and then like on top of it, like that, um, that kind of framework Mm-hmm. making sure that you're clear on like top, middle, and bottom in evaluating the work holistically. I love it. I think it's super helpful for us, even if we want to go agency side, first couple of years in their careers to understand the perspective of who we're trying to sell the work to and to like deliver to. So I appreciate that. Yeah. And we can touch upon that again and, you know, hover there if we want, if, when we get back to it. But I want to get back to the name of this podcast is Breaking Entering and figure out how you, where were you, what were you doing when you realized you want to make ads and marketing for a living? Do you remember that moment in time? Has it ever hit you? Are you just doing this because, you know, it's a job? (laughs) I had such a, I had a really 
I was gonna say random, but but unique path to advertising. Yeah. So I out of college, I started off as like more project management account side, but it was for a medical communications agency. And so for that, your your clients are um like big pharma and your target audience are healthcare practitioners. HCPs. Yes. And so it was very unique because I actually had no interest in healthcare. <laughs> but like I ended up um agency side because of more transferable skills like attention to detail, project management, good with people, like that kind of stuff. And then I eventually moved to um a digital agency again doing account. Um but that was like more advertising oriented but still specialist because it was digital. Um and then from there went to another boutique agency and that was more traditional advertising agency. It was focusing on travel and lifestyle, but mm-hmm. um, I think that's when like, it was kind of an interesting windy path to get to the closest thing to like a traditional advertising agency. So you started healthcare. Yeah. And they, they don't mess around there. No. You learn attention to detail. You learn procedures, process correct ways to do things and then that got you into an agency you said yeah like it was very small it was like 12 people it was tiny i think at the time like in myself now would have called it a startup um yep but it was based out of boston but it was still it had like website redesigns but then also a few smaller campaigns yep and then use that, like grow your skills, particularly around client management and um, production or being a producer. And then went to a more traditional advertising agency. Got it. Did, when you were studying in college, did you study marketing? Did you study advertising, communications? Did you knew? Did you know then you wanted to get into this creative comms route of the world? No, I actually studied. It was called human development. But it is. It was a, it's basically a flavor of psychology. It's developmental Mm -hmm. psychology. I need some help with that, I feel like. But it's not about me. Yeah, it was, uh, I, when I went to college, I wanted, I knew I I liked people. I found them to be interesting and I, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And so psychology to me, gave the most breadth of like what you could do afterward whether it was business or something more science oriented um and then i think i fell into agency side it felt like the skills i developed were more for my extracurriculars and like a little bit of like my people sense got it what were some of those extracurriculars that you engaged in i um was in a sorority i also um led my dance troupe i danced for a really long time nice a lot of like creating events, mm-hmm. uh, promotion, promoting those events, right? Yeah. Getting people actually come to the shows, um, yeah. and the organization of it. Got it. So from health to a little bit of like startup well, to, to yeah. more digital, and then I see here marketing intern at Nestle. Yeah, or Skinny Cow, which is ice cream, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I in between then I um, I went to business school at Kellogg. Uh, uh, um, were and in the you're gonna ask a question? No, I'm, no, keep going. Yeah, the because I think something we um the reason I did it mm-hmm. was I because you asked like about going into brand as yeah. What to- happened? What was the switch? What was the catalyst? What were you thinking at this point in time? Like help us be in your brain. Then I I would say it's twofold. So one, I. I like breadth of responsibility and I felt that agency, it, you know, it's like very, to me, it felt like very narrow and deep around like you're making um, campaigns together. Um, but it felt like always kind of like the same flavor, but always trying to do it better. Mm. And I yeah. wanted kind of like a broader set of responsibilities and then which to me, a, a brand and brand marketing would be attractive. Yeah. And then the other was that when I was agency side, I always felt like I was um, executing someone else's strategy, right? Like inherently, like they own the business, like it was their budget. 
and I was, you know, supporting the client. Yep. And basically, like, I was like, I want to be the client. <laughs> I want to own the strategy, which is also why I went to business school. Ah, yeah. I mean, we are in the we are in the service business here on the agency side, and we we do as the client says, and usually it's mutually beneficial where we try to push, and you know, they are brands are hiring agencies if they do to offer that neutral third party perspective, do that research, come up with that different angle and and really explore and pass the boundaries that the brand could potentially do. That's the theory, right? So I I definitely get it. Um, And you were in the account track. Is that correct in the agency side? Yeah, I did mostly account. And then towards the end, I did digital production. So did you think about like, was there another calling maybe on the agency side or you were like, I'm good. I'm going, I'm going to business school. I'm going brand side. Did you ever think about like writing art or um, strategy? Cause the strategy seems pretty interesting too, as like a creative strategist. Yeah. Yeah. I think if going back, I probably would have been more interested in strategy on the agency mm-hmm. side, because for me, it felt like, especially on account, eventually like you're about growing the business, right? Like it goes way more into nurturing the client relationship, um and like them, yeah. is dev oriented yeah um and i wasn't sure if that's what i wanted to do uh and it felt that way like if i stayed agency side so i think if i had talked to my earlier self i'd probably been like you should go check out strategy i, I probably would have found that to be really interesting hmm. but you didn't you didn't do that so you, that. <laughs> you enrolled and how many years out of um, college were, how many years in the industry on the agency side did you manage to to complete before you said, all right, it's time to switch over? Six. Six. Okay. So you gave it a, yeah, that's a, that's a long time. Yeah. Do you, do you recommend now like people that graduate, get a couple of years of experience before they go get their MBA? I've been yeah. told that I've seen that. I just want to confirm, like, you I, don't want to do it right away. Right? No. And and the you could, um, like there are friends I have that didn't know quite what they wanted to do, and kind of used business school as that opportunity to figure it out. I think that it is a better use of your time and money if you have an idea, because yeah. you can like more be more focused and get after it uh, in a way that I think is more um, productive. Because otherwise, you you're just kicking the can down the road of like, what do I want to do? What do I care about? And so it was kind of nice to be more focused at the beginning uh, and what I wanted. Yeah. And it's just nice to get that salary or money and then save up and then also get an understanding of the workplace. Yeah. And have that direction. Right. So you fully committed, you went to uh, Kellogg, that's Northwestern University, the school of management as an MBA candidate, two-year program, correct? Yes. So I, there's full-time two years, but there are a few other programs. Some are part-time, so you could work mm-hmm. and do it. And there's another that I think is um, a one-year program, if you wanted to, that is more... Um, Accelerated? Yes. And usually more for folks that, like, I know exactly what I want to do. I want this to be as quick as possible and go do that. You could do that as well. And what'd you pick? Two-year. Two year traditional bread and butter, the full service. You got the full MBA experience. Yeah. Are you working during this? How does this work now? Um, an MBA, like, are you? You have this internship. It's uh, with Nestle. Yeah. Where does that come to play? Is it like in your summer break? Is it yeah. traditional? Or is it full year? Give me the lay of the land here. Yeah. So, um, first year, I think you start in August, and then the First year closes maybe in May or June. And the goal first year is to get, for most people, an internship mm-hmm. to help one, because usually for companies that take interns, it allows you to potentially secure an offer at the end. So then you know where you're going to go the long year, right? So it makes it like a little bit less stressful of a second year. Yeah. Um, and also like to help make money to afford what you're in <laughs> your schooling that you're doing. Uh, and so I, applied i forget when in the school year but i applied and was looking for consumer packaged goods um marketing internships or brand internships and so then i got one at nestle and their ice cream division um at the time they sold since then but 
it was based out of Oakland. Uh, and so then I interned on Skinny Cow, which I would have to check if that's still around. Um, and then the internship was probably like two months, maybe. And yeah. then I got the full-time offer uh, to work there after I graduated in 2014. And it worked. It worked. My mom loves Skinny Cow. Yeah. I, I loved working on ice cream. I'm not going to lie. I loved working on Nestle. Just, it, I have so many questions. I think, I, I guess, like, why, why, why Northwestern? Because there's a bunch of other business schools, I believe. I mean, I was told that if you're going to go get an MBA, it should be at a big brand, like an elite. Like, it matters where you go. So Kellogg fits in my brand perception as one of those elite schools. I don't know what the other ones are. I mean, I live in Chicago. Um, I know Notre Dame. I actually spoke to MBA students at Notre Dame. Can you believe that? Me neither. But is that true? Like the the bigger the MBA, like probably the better of the brand name. It kind of matters, or is that a lie? I mean, I I think it matters. Um, right? You want to try and get to the best school that mm-hmm. you can, and part of it is also the companies that come to recruit there in terms of like you getting the best opportunity. I would say the other factors are, you know, what are you interested in? And so like, I knew I wanted to be in marketing and I know that Kellogg is a excellent, if not the best mm-hmm. marketing school. In my opinion, I'm obviously biased, but. Yeah, um, well, it worked. So yeah. you're right. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Very excited. Happy with my life. Um, I, And I'd say the other is like, where do you want to be? Right. And so there are some schools that have like excellent reputations, but like maybe are more like local, more East Coast, more like regional. Mm -hmm. And so I liked how Kellogg felt more national that I had an option to like go wherever because I um, am from New Jersey, I mentioned, Um, but my sister had lived, lives in California. And so then I knew I wanted to also look in California and I liked how uh, Kellogg gave me the national, more national option. Where did you live in Chicago when you were there? Evanston. So like, not really Chicago. Yeah. No, I'm not judging that. Yeah. I love it. And the program, difficult. Did you lose a lot of sleep? Were you stressed out? Because you're not working. You did the internship, correct? Yes. Only yes. in the summer. So you had the you had the time. Was it stressful? Would you know, was it the worst two years of your life? No, it was like amazing. It, it's so wonderful because you it it does feel like going back to college again in a fun way. Yeah. But- greater sense of what you want to do and yeah. you're meeting all these like smart fun people that are similarly ambitious and so i loved it uh, and are you taking classes with like uh like the accounting folks the the other side i mean what else? hr finance yeah yeah it's probably a great network I'm sure everybody's yes. off doing great stuff everyone does um there's like your foundational courses that everyone will have to do unless you test out of them but like everyone probably does like the finance class the operations class the marketing class and then as you get through those and you know what you want to do you could focus more on your electives and so for mine they're more marketing oriented so year two is more elective based yeah likely gotcha now looking back is this necessary? I mean, obviously, it's a for sure. Like, if you do it, you commit, you get into a good school, you invest the time and the money, it's going to help. It's going to pay dividends, it seems like. I mean, do you see the the ROI? Is it worth it? Said and done. This was the best strategy for you? Yes, for me. But yeah. I don't think... You it's not need... one size fits all. No, it's not. But, like, there is a... It's just a little bit... I don't know if it's bumpier or like, um, I think like more networking, more hustling. It's certainly possible. Like I have um, old coworkers who've gone client brand side, but it felt like you just need the right opportunity. Whereas with business school, it kind of sets up an inflection point that allows you to do that. But like, it's a, it's a lot of time. It's a lot of money and it may not be right for everyone. And so I think you can shift agency side to brand side, but Mm -hmm. it it feels like a little bit more um, like a potentially like a longer road and trying to work your network. Right. Yes. 
And I've heard these stories where you're working at an agency, maybe you're a really good account lead, and I've heard they get poached. Yeah. Like by they know you're working your business, great with the client. Right? Like they've invested, they know. Right. They patient. know you, they hire you. And then they actually, the agency doesn't mind it either. Cause then you're friends with the person and yeah. then you have like a friend like on the, and they get you and they, they hopefully they keep you. So agencies don't mind that either. It's not the worst case scenario rather than lose into another agency, which we see a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And in, in, in general. So yeah, it's the same thing with portfolio school for creatives. Um, you don't get like that. You don't get the MBA or a master's degree, but there are some VCU brands that are, does that, but you're, they're investing time, like a year to two years and a significant amount of money. Um, but it works. If you commit, it does work and you can grind, you can network, you can work hard, you can stay up late. And that's what the point of this podcast is, is to like help those aspiring ad creatives not have to go to a portfolio school right. just so they can break in. It's all about knowing, Kim. It seems like you had that that point and that agency route uh, within, you said year six, year three to six. Yeah. Um, that you knew that this was your end game, was breaking into marketing and yeah. being a brand manager of some sort. And then you figure it out, working backwards, okay, business school is there. It's a part of that track. Getting an internship from that business school is also helpful. What's the next step? So did you have that vision? Did it kind of make sense to you then right there? Yes, but I had to, I probably started thinking about it at least at year five of six or four and a half, because the, you, if you're going to do this track, yeah. You do end up needing to take, like, I forget that even the name of the stand- GMAT <laughs> of the standardized stuff you have to take. You have yeah. to find a bunch of schools, you have to go interviews, et cetera, et cetera. And so, but I, I do think that, like, the you investing in what you want and what your you want your career to be and, like, your skills and, like, what gives you energy and what doesn't to help figure out and get you closer to what you want for your career yep. is always time well spent. And so I think that that led me to business school. It didn't have to, but it would have taken a lot more like networking, intentionality, hustling to do a mm-hmm. similar thing. Gotcha. And then the key difference is you broke in uh, to Nestle. Uh, you managed to stay there for quite a bit. It seems like you were there for over four years. Yeah. You rose your way up in haagen Is that how you mm-hmm. pronounce it? haagen Hagendas, <laughs> is that right? Yeah, Hagendas. Hagendas, yeah, yeah. It's like the elite luxury ice cream. Yes, it is basically the only ice cream we buy in my house. Still, yeah. It's, I mean, you don't mess around. You can't be. It's good stuff. So you were on that for two years, I two think, years, yeah, four years, four years total. Yes, I did a few other brands while I was there, but Hangadaz was the one I stayed on for the longest, for sure. Nice. So I guess like what were some of those just high level? And I, I know I could talk to you all day about this world because I, you know, it's interesting to me. But biggest differences, like, did it come true? Did you get the breadth that you were looking for? Um, guess like, yeah, just tell me about the yeah. biggest differences you saw right away. Yes, versus agency. Experience. Yes, versus agency. Yeah, I Came would say on the other side. I got the the breath I was looking for. And part of the reason I at the time was looking at consumer packaged goods is because it typically uh, like that industry has a reputation for training and developing brand folks or brand managers. And so that was something that I wanted. And when I got to Nestle, it is more like jack of all trades version of brand because there are some brand jobs that are more marketing communications. And then there's some brand jobs are more like small business owner. And so um, Nestle had options that were both. I I would describe it as like three pillars that made up the brand job. And then you did different rotations. So like one is more similar to what I'm doing now, which is like marketing communications, like working with advertising agencies. Um, Another is we called like base business, but basically small business management, right? Like, how are you going to hit your number? What are the levers you can pull? Um, how do you analyze the business to figure out how to best support it? And then the third, uh, we called more like product or innovation, which is literally like, what does your audience or customer care about? 
what is does Hagen Dazs represent? And then how do you develop products that like best meet the needs of your audience? And so, Love for it. example, like I launched Hagen Dazs non dairy while I was on Hagen Dazs. And then for a period, I managed the business. And for a period, I like did a bunch of campaigns. So, like to me, like that was variety that I was looking yeah. for that I didn't guess have as much when I was agency side. Or I got to agency side via clients mm-hmm. versus responsibilities, you know? Right. Well, I'm interested. Kim, how can people reach out to you if they have more questions? They want to pick your brain. Is LinkedIn the best way to do that? Yeah. <laughs> I forget my uh, actual um, URL, but it's if you look up Kim Gas and Chitra, I'm sure it's Kim Chitra. It's LinkedIn.com slash I N slash Kim Chitra, C H I T R A. And I'll put it in the description. Nice. Is there anything else, Kim? I know we could talk forever but I want to leave them to talk with you. Is there anything that you were dying to say that I didn't get to ask you or you want to bring up to our listeners? Um, one thing that in in preparing for this, uh, uh, like resources that mattered or I, um, I was reflecting because you'd asked that question. Mm-hmm. And a, a lot of it for me has been people. Like I keep in touch with a lot of my um, business school friends, obviously, but then also former colleagues to talk about shop. And so... I think that's something because I'm less so into like different books or podcasts. But for me, it's always like people that I trust and hearing more about like how they would handle things and, and kind of talking shop that I really enjoyed. So I wanted to mention that. I love that. Well, I'll have to have some of those friends on this show. Yeah. Cool. Kim, great job. Thank you so much. Thank and you. I hope I did okay learning about this marketing world. You did great. Thanks. <laughs>